Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and down, sad and stuffed! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast, man. Excited, delighted to be with you guys on this Wednesday night episode, man. We're going to get again, get it in. We're going to talk about all things spiritual. Shout out to everybody holding us down in the chat rooms right now, no matter where you're listening to, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, uh, Twitch, DLive, all of the different streaming platforms and outlets out there that we have family scattered abroad, who's all hanging out with us tonight on those platforms of choice. And shout out to everybody listening on the podcasting apps as well. You guys know who you are. Thank you guys for all the love, man. Um, you guys really make the show what it is. And I want to say a huge thank you again. To everybody supporting this show via Patreon, uh, if you believe in the work and you're blessed and touched by the conversation, the work that I bring to the table, the music, anything, the book, the guests, all of that stuff, this isn't possible without your help. So if you would like to support, um, you can go to my Patreon page and there's different levels and tiers where you get access to some really cool stuff. Get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is the community aspect to what we're building here. You get access to uh, my entire discography of music, which is like 200 plus songs. You get all of that for five dollars. Five dollars. Um, yeah. So if you want to support there's other tiers and other things you get my guided meditations and all that cool stuff. Check it out. There's stuff that you get for one dollar. Whatever you can do, it means the world uh, that you believe in th- this platform and you are co-creators with making this possible. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to uh, Jessica Dugas. Thank you, my friend, for coming on board. And also shout out to Julie. Welcome to the community, my friend. Welcome to the Discord as well. You get access to all that stuff. Check it out. Patreon.com backslash True Seeker. My new book is here. Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God by uh, True Seeker. And the forward is by Jordan Maxwell. If you haven't had a chance to check this out, it is on Amazon. You can go to TrueSeeker.com. Go straight to the link that way. Go to the portal. Get your copy. Uh, you won't be disappointed. You'll be blessed. It's good stuff. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump into tonight's episode. I'm going to bring my friend, Christy uh, Warnick. Christy, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I was on your show uh, sometime last year, and then Mm -hmm. you were supposed to uh, be on my show, and we tried to do it, but it was during my internet battles, the (laughs) the internet battles of 2019, which were several months of chaos and questions for me. But uh, we tried to make it happen. We finally got it rescheduled. Here we are. I'm excited to uh, have you on and talk about your work and all that good stuff. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, last year was was quite the year, right? <laughs> quite the year. It's a lot of transitions going on, a lot of transformation. I'm loving it. Um, 
it wasn't always the easiest thing, but um, it's getting better, much better. So much easier, so much better, just flowing, going with the flow. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that too because we were talking off air before we went live and I was like, hold on, we just got to go live. And that's kind of like a rule. Don't talk too yeah. much before you're live because we start yeah. getting rid of with so much. I was like, no, the community needs this. People need to hear this. So we went ahead and went live. But before we jump into that, because there are some shifts going on and beautiful from di- to see it from different perspectives. And I, I've, some of the stuff you were talking about, I've kind of dealt with a couple years ago in levels. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll get into it in a minute. Just kind of uh, give your, your background, who you are, what you bring to the table, just so people who aren't familiar with your work know who you are. Then we'll jump into that. Absolutely. So I'm Christy Warnick, a spiritual healer and teacher. Um, even though I don't really identify with that so much, you know, as we're, many of us are kind of dropping the labels and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, so I just use that as um, just an overall idea of some of the things that are, you know, possible with sessions and things that I do. So um, I started uh, many years ago, just normal, everyday, you know, going about my business and and working for an accounting office and um, started along the way uh, after my son was born and all of this, started having some some health issues that came up and went in search of of medical attention and um, or medical care and didn't really receive uh, what, you know, any answers at that time. And so it's like, okay, so let me, I went in search of, you know, I was doing the alternative medicine stuff and uh, went in search of energy healers and learned so much. I mean, so many years of learning about energy healing, what it is, what it does all. I mean, there was so much information though, that I learned that, and I'm so grateful that I learned it, but now I've been guided to, um, really let go of what I learned uh, so that I could just be in the space uh, and be more unlimited and, and bring about, and I'm like, well, you know, what do I do if I don't know all this stuff? And it's like, that, that's just it. There's, there's power in the, in the not knowing too. And cause I, I knew, I do, and I know a lot of stuff, but it's like, how much of that is really actually true or how much of it was made up, you know, over the years uh, due to other people's experiences. And then they, they taught from their experience. So, so now I help people with finding their truth, finding that and discovering that power within them and that connection that they have with the divine, the universe, the creator of all that is, whatever you, you want to call that, whatever that is for you. Uh, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. The names, does it, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's what it means for you and, and kind of going from there. But I got certified in a lot of things. I'm a Reiki master, hollow sets technician. You know, I, I got certified in all of these things, light wave and all these other techniques and modalities. And now it's like, wow, you know, I can, I can let so much go, but yet the sessions are so much more powerful and, uh, and I, I do, one of my biggest beliefs is that, and, and it's not just a belief, it's just a knowing now things come in more as a knowing because a belief is only a belief as long as you believe that it's true and you can change your mind at any time. And so beliefs aren't meant for us to really hold on to unless it's something that we absolutely believe in that is you know like who we are something like that but you know we still can exist and live an amazing life without having so many beliefs and so many different things and in creating in that way we can create more from that i am presence that i am that i am that power that is within everyone not just certain people uh everyone is 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 amazing and when you really go beyond the the things, like I said, whether it be beliefs, programming, conditioning, whatever it is, is this amazing divine being that is within everyone. And so I don't believe that anyone is really better than anyone else, even though there are some things that some people are better at doing. But as far as the your true self, I mean, no one is, is better than anyone else. And so 
So it really takes a lot of the, the pressure off and, and really unlimits you. And for me, like I said, that anything is possible. That is something that I, I just, I, I believe in, but it's a knowing and it's, it's very, un, it, it does help to unlimit things. Cause you're like, okay, if anything is possible, there's not one thing that I can say for sure that is out there that I say <laughs> that is absolutely not possible. I mean, there's, I just, that mm. just, I'm just, I don't get that. And I'm just like, I've said it so many years now, anything is possible that it's actually becoming my reality. And it's, it's just, it's just amazing what we can do with this. Um, like I said, the power within, not just the, the mind is, you know, we're taught at a young age or uh, I was anyway, many years ago that, you know, the mind is so powerful, but there's something even more powerful than that, <laughs> that you can really create amazing things with. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> and I was talking about how it sounds similar to like something that happened to me, which even the wording and terminology that you're using just reminds me of my awakening out of like organized religion. Like mm -hmm. this is the way it is. This is what I've been taught. There aren't many. It doesn't flex much. It's concrete. And uh, anything outside of this is kind of questionable. And then you kind of have that that uh, awakening or epiphany that, wow, I thought I had it figured out. But God, you know, the universe like kind of like stretches your imagination and shows you the endless possibilities if you would simply believe. And then so well, for me, very similar to what you're saying, but coming out of religion and opening up to the vastness and the beauty of and even finding peace and not knowing. And even finding peace and and uh, not having to be right or having to teach it like this way. This is the right way. So it sounds very similar to what you're experiencing uh, to what I experienced coming out of religion. Very dogmatic, very uniform. And you have to learn it all. And once you learn it all, you got it. You're good. Mm -hmm. We're going to send you out to teach it. And then you're just like, D God, the universe has a way of, uh, I don't, you, you said what? I don't do what? I don't, you know, and it's like, oh my goodness. So it's almost like, we're challenging once we have this mode and it's the only way now now i see the beauty in all ways mm -hmm. or no way whatever like just the the beauty in, in in everything and then you're talking about the mind and uh the the vastness of our what, what we can experience in this like literally it's it opens up the door to like whatever you can believe whatever you can you can see whatever you can see you, you can experience you know, and uh, and it's opened up the doors for us, I'm sure. And a lot of people listening uh, and it's closed the door for a lot of people as well to beautiful, crazy out of this world encounters, not once, but on many a times because you believed it, because you were open to have those experiences. And we just keep kind of having our mind blown all the time about the beauty and awe of this thing we call life. Mm. Yeah. And when you read, when people realize that they're not all these things that they, they once thought they were, were told that they were, someone else thought that they were, uh, like, like the mind, you know, you're not the mind, it's a tool. It's something that, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, it has a service, it has a, a, a purpose, obviously, but somewhere over, I don't know how, how long, um, ago it's been, but somewhere over time, and I, I use that word loosely, <laughs> uh, somewhere along the line, there's been, you know, just things that have been created, even to do with like the body, in, in, which includes the brain, which that's, you know, the mind, the whole thing like that, but that in its functions, like for example, there's so much about the body that I learned through you know, my own personal um, health issues and stuff like that, that I'm now, it's like, wow, there's some, what if the, within the body, because it, there's the, within the universe, let's just take the universe, for example, is such a mystery. It's such a mystery. Could we ever know all the, the amazing mysteries of the universe? And, and no. And so the body can be the same way too. So once I, let go of what I thought, you know, oh, well, this function, you know, this does this and this does that, because I did, I learned so much about just overall medical stuff, you know, what does the brain do? And what do each of the, 
the parts of the brain do and, and all of this stuff and all the, the functions of the organs and the glands and all these things to do with the body. And so now I'm like, the people that I learned that from or, or the experience that I was experiencing at that time, and, and that's how it was working, it's like, is that really truly the way it was meant to be though? And so when a lot of things are because of conditioning or some, something like that, programming, whatever it is. And so even genetics are not uh, all that we believed that they were. And so it's amazing what can happen though when you just say, you know what, I don't know <laughs> and I'm okay with that. And, and so it's allowing the mysteries and the surprises and things like that more so than needing to and having to know all this stuff because I found that so much of what I knew because I knew a lot of stuff, but then I'm like, how much of that is actually true? Because I kept finding things that I was like, well, wait a minute, that's really limiting. And, and really when you go back to the, your true self and, and your true nature, there's, there's not all these limitations. And so when I would run across something like that, I'd be like, well, wait a minute, because it was like, some things were like, you hear about, okay, you have to believe it to receive it. Well, why? Who said that? Because isn't, isn't that limiting? If you have to believe something in order to receive it, couldn't you receive it? And then that helps you believe it. I mean, why limit yourself to one way or the other? So when you start unlimiting even those types of things, it's amazing what can show up because you're, you don't have this meaning that you've given it and you don't have the limitations around it. That's that good. pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so for my awakening out of what I came out of, you know, it made a lot of people mad. So did you uh, did you go through any of that? Did you go through like uh, loss of friends or being vocal uh, once people are kind of in a certain paradigm? Say, OK, well, if you don't believe this anymore, then you can't play with us. Or was there any of that going on like during this this time? <laughs> Actually, I in that regard, I was very fortunate. I a few years ago. Well, and right after I was going to started learning more about the energy healing and all of that, I put out there to the universe, I suppose, um, I would love to find a way to, you know, to really share more with, to, you know, with people about energy healing, because at that time I was like, that's what saved my life. And then I was led to another, the next step after that was like, that was just part of it. But then, you know, more recently, it's like you know, I was led to discover, you know, my true self and, and that I am connected and, and that there is no separation, all that stuff. But but at that time, a few months after that, I put out there, you know, I'd love to sh you know share more with people about energy healing. I got invited on a, a couple of uh, to be interviewed on some shows, Facebook lives and things like that. And uh, after one, I was uh, asked, uh, you know, hey, we're starting a network. Would you like to come on and have your own show? And I was just like, oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, that was just totally not me. I'd never done a show. I, I mean, these were just my first couple of times just even being on camera and being online and put myself out there. And then I was offered my own show. And so I was like, but this is answering, a, you know, something that I put out there to really be able to share with other people more about energy healing. And so I ended up getting back with them and saying, yes. So I started my own show and that was, you know, like last year you were on that show with me. And so, and so now I've actually, I'm on another network. So it's actually gone from the power of energy healing show to now I'm doing healing your way to enlightenment. So I'm on a totally different network that is not on Facebook live and and so what's what's really happened along the way here is that I was supported in in all of this that was going on. Once I got past it, I kind of was away from a lot of my um, I didn't have a lot of friends that are that were here around me, you know, like where I live necessarily. I had. The thing is, is I don't go up to people and say, hey, this is, unless they ask me, I don't just go around, you know, sharing all this stuff with people. I'm just, I'm totally, you know, hey, how are you doing? You know, just asking them, you know, just having a regular normal conversation. I don't go around talking about spiritual stuff unless someone asks me about it. So, 
um, so my regular friends, we don't really discuss this kind of stuff. And so it, it wasn't an issue for me at all because I don't push it on anybody. And it's up to them. If they ask me about it, that's one thing. But most of the time they don't. And if they do, they're, they're curious. And so I'll answer their questions and then we just go on about our business. So, but with the show and everything, I actually just, when I did the, the Facebook live, the, the show there, I was sharing my videos on my personal page as well as my business page. I was like, I don't care who sees this because either they'll like it and watch it or watch it and learn, you know, decide that they like it or they won't and they just won't watch it. it it's no big deal. But I never really got that from my friends um, because I wasn't still really close to my friends that I had like from high school or growing up or anything like that. And then, so I really, and, and all of my friends now that I have on Facebook are totally into all the spiritual stuff and they're, they're open to this kind of stuff. So it, it was really a very, I was very fortunate in that way. Where are you at? Aren't you in Alabama? I am. I'm in, um, well, close to Birmingham, Alabama. And so, and, and my husband and son, they, you know, of course it's weird for them, but they let me do my thing and they do their thing and, and it's all, it's all good. They don't really judge me for it. They just say, Hey, she does some weird stuff and that's okay. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's all good. And so my family really doesn't understand that much, but they don't need to or have to, you yeah. know, it's, it's not their, their path. It's not their journey. And, and if they have questions, they'll come to me and ask me, but otherwise it's, it's not a big deal for me because I don't look for them for approval. That's the thing I I'm doing my thing. And they can do their thing. And it's, you know, I look at it as, is their life. They do what they want with it. And this is my life and I do what I want. And if they come to me, you know, I can help them out or whatever, but otherwise, you know, we just do our own thing and it, and it all, it's all good. I mean, we're just, like I said, I was very fortunate in that way. I didn't have, I don't, I don't look at it as I didn't have anything to lose because really do we, uh, this, um, and this was an amazing um, thing that came to me the other, I get just these really moments of clarity, which I have a lot of that, but sometimes these messages come in very clear in those moments. Sometimes it's just silence and that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with the peace, but um, it was like, what if I always like to play around with the what ifs because I, I work with and this is how I put it out there instead of telling people, OK, this needs to and has to be done or this has to be this way. I, I work and play with possibilities. That's how I look at them as possibilities versus telling someone else what to do, because I don't put my stuff off on anyone else. I share it. So it's suggestions or possibilities versus saying, OK, this is the because I don't believe that there's only one way. Because then you would be saying, OK, then there aren't infinite possibilities if you say this is the only way that you, you know, to do this. So I open that up and leave that open. And so the other morning it came in so clear to me and, it, and I actually wrote it down and it and I always like to add in the what if at the beginning. But um, so what if there was nothing to lose yet everything to gain? Because that in which we truly are, we cannot lose and it cannot be taken away. And anything outside of that is temporary. So, yeah, so it, it was just, uh, it's been very freeing. It's very, very freeing. Yeah, stepping out of the, the paradigms and uh, is, a, is a big one for a lot of people. And again, like once we kind of put, you know, our, our existence and beliefs and God in a box, it has a way of, of you know, mm. exploding or you know, going like turning in on itself. And oh uh, yeah, I found so many limitations and and conditioning and programming around and beliefs and stuff around God and the soul, and and a lot of that comes from religion and and wherever else you know um, people you know call it past lives whatever, um, but it doesn't have to be. You get to choose at some point in time, you get to choose what is true for you or, or not. And that's what I help people to do is to find and discover their truth and that power within them, which is not only within them, it's, it's all around and it's, it's above and below and all around. And so it's just an amazing thing that we get to discover, but we can do so by just 
being. And, and really, um, once you s stop looking for all these different complicated answers, it really can be very simple yet profound. And the answers will come to you, but you don't need to or have to know these things in order to heal things or to, to, to heal or to resolve or whatever. Um, I found that there's, once you connect in, it, it becomes so much, so much easier. Yeah. Um, it, it, but I think like, like when, when people are trying to find, um, healing or they need help with something it's it helps them to uh to say okay she's a reiki she's a reiki healer okay she's she's a psychic healer or she does this or she does you know, she's a he's a christian mystic or he's a christian healer whatever so they want to they ha even have their boxes so that they can understand mm -hmm. what we're doing right and it's uh so and that's fine do you that's still fine. do you still use the modalities or is this a, just a totally different process now or do you kind of just sit with the energy and just kind of do whatever you feel led to do. I can use the modalities. I just don't follow along with what I was, all the things that I was taught about them. Like if I enjoy doing like a hand movement or something, it, it's just that, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it's the intention, but it's also just being, like I had mentioned in the space of, and, and with the sessions, this is kind of what happens or the best way that I know to describe it, let's put it that way, because I don't know what happens okay. exactly. I mean, it's, and, and that's the beauty of it. We don't need to know, but what I, the best way that I can describe it for myself at this time is to say that there's this space of, and some people call it the quantum field. Some people call it the zero point, you know, it's been called so many different things, but I just like to say that it's this place where everything exists, yet nothing exists at the same time. And so it's almost like there's infinite possibilities. Anything is possible. And I mean that in the best possible way, of course, because I see this like as a, an umbrella of the divine, which at the, you know, it's, it goes in and is stemmed from or comes from that highest level of love. That unconditional love is really beyond words, but that's the best way that we know to describe it is unconditional love or truest love, purest love, um, universal love, whatever you want to call it. And then from there up under that, what are all the amazing things that come up under that? And for me, that's what the divine is. And because in that space, there's no fear, there's no judgment because uh, the divine doesn't do that. And there's no problems or issues that are truly uh, exist in that space. And so when you enter this space or when you're in this space, this, this energy or whatever you want to call it, I just call it a space. And it's, um, yeah, like I said, amazing things. Even when people like schedule a session with me, it's like sometimes I've had many of them where even before, like as soon as we get on the phone, they'll say, you know, they had scheduled, let's say like a day before, two days before, maybe a week before. And they said, wow, do you know that since I've scheduled this, 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 and this, and this has happened since then. And so things already start to shift and change when they schedule that session. And then by the time we get to the session, it's just like everything just starts unfolding. And it's just such a beautiful process now versus I used to muscle test and douse for, for different answers and look for different things. And now I don't do that anymore because I'm just like, <laughs> okay, so what, what's going on here? What do you feel? What is, you know, what are you experiencing? Yeah. And then it's almost just like, okay, let's just enter that in there. And then um, we'll just let the divine take care of that. Because like I said, there's a divine intelligence that knows so much more than, than anything that I could have learned. Yeah. No, I'm just, with you. I've I've kind of always done that, and I mm -hmm. felt like I'm missing out because I don't have a label. Oh yeah, it's Reiki. We're doing Reiki tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just like okay, let's yeah. sit with the energy. I'm gonna release it. I'm gonna move it. I can feel it. So I've never been taught. It's all intuitive. Mm -hmm. Like I've I've been just it's been taught through hands on and through mm -hmm. being in the energy and knowing how to push it and pushing it and then seeing it move off. Of, you know, I've never been taught. So, mm -hmm. but part of even me would be like you need the Reiki stuff almost to, to, to validate. Yeah, we're doing, well, we're doing and Reiki. Some people I do, I do go Reiki. in search of, of yeah. Reiki masters. Um, 
of certain types of healer, certain people that are labeled in certain oh, ways. Yeah. But yeah. the way I look at it is that, and this happens all the time, is that if they're meant to find me, they will, no matter what the label is. And so many of them find me through Facebook or YouTube, or they just do a Google search. I had someone one time that scheduled a session and she was like, I don't know how I found you. I just went to the internet and your name showed up somehow. Yeah. <laughs> know, and, right? and here I am, I've never done this before. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. I'm totally ready. And I was like, well, that's why you found me. And someone else said that I showed up on their Instagram and they don't even follow me and they don't even know, but they saw one of my posts. Cause I do daily in, I post daily inspirational posts. Yeah. And so they, they, they liked some of those that, that they were seeing and they just contacted me. And, mm. but so many of them said that they were guided to me. Yeah. For they sure. said that spirit or, you know, or whatever it is that it, somehow spiritually they were guided to me and knew that I could help them in some way. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm here to help, even though I'm just here to, to allow in this, this amazing divine that knows exactly who you are and what to do for you and, and how to do it. And how wonderful is that? So that's the reason I love playing with miracles because there's so many miracles that are already around us. And when you get to playing around with some of the I am's, that's pretty fun too, because everyone is a miracle. And so what if you had a belief, and this is for people that are, that are, you know, um, manifesting from their subconscious mind, but what if you had a belief that, well, first of all, that anything is possible, but also that you are a miracle. Like, so if you said I am a miracle and I attract and receive and experience that in which I truly am. Now I like to add in that word truly, because there's, there's more of that, the I am that I am all these amazing things without really defining that. But if you pulled out just a few of those things, love, peace, harmony, joy, um, you know, healthy well-being, all of these are included in the I am and, and so much more, right? And in there also is abundance and, and being unlimited, you know, it, it's un, the divine is unlimited. And so yet also there's acceptance and there's all these wonderful things that can be included in the I am that I am that it could possibly mean if you were to give it a meaning. And knowing that that is not only within you, but you're connected to it. You're a part of that. It's a part of you and it's around you. And, and what if you let that help you instead of believing that there's, there's all these other things that have to need to, and have to be done. I mean, it, it's just amazing when you just throw out the box altogether. Right. When that happens, like for you, even though you didn't learn the techniques and the modalities, you had the religion uh, background that, that kind of you worked through. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that you kind of found your way as, as far as letting go of some of the limitations with that. And for me, I didn't come from a really a religious background, but mine was, though, I went through so many different healing techniques and modalities that I learned. And I found that with that came a lot of fear. And so I, I let that go though. So it's been very freeing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's so interesting. Was it was was it a bit of identity in it? Like, okay, this is my identity. And so that had to kind of like the ego death would like like that validated you. And so God's like, No, that doesn't that's not who you are. You know, if I strip yeah. that from you, you still you still have you still possess the ability to, to be in flow and to tap in without those things. Was it any? Oh of that? yeah. Because there's a yeah. big, big, big identity. Uh, well, but a lot of beliefs that go with healers that, yeah. that come, you know, for healers. And so, but it, when I was like, that's not who I am though. That's something that I get to do. That's totally different. So when you're letting go of the, I, you know, I am this and I am that, uh, and ch start changing and, and also letting go of some of the, I, you know, you need to and have to do this, but what if you, you get to be who you are, you know, you, with the, I am, you just are, it just is and, but you, and from there, cause when you put that first, then you get to do these other things, you get to help people and it, it helps them with healing, but 
it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, that's your identity and it comes with all these um, belief systems and things, just like uh, people that um, say that they're empathic. That comes with so much programming and conditioning that that's the reason why they feel the things that they feel. That's not meant to be. If it's really truly a spiritual gift, uh, uh, this divine gift, it doesn't come with pain and struggling and suffering in yeah. its truest form. Yeah, there's not it like a, <laughs> you see a lot, a lot of memes and stuff like that and uh, where people are talking about, oh, this and that and this and that. It's like, for me, I know, and even what you said a while ago, it's like, he's like, well, I don't really talk about it in public. If you're an empath and you're feeling those energies, like you got to deal with it. Like you got it. Like it's for a reason. It's not just like, oh, I'm being beat up all these energies. Look, hold on. Who's dealing with depression? You who's being beat by their husband? You. OK, I get, feel like I'm. Why do I feel like I'm getting beat up when I hang around you? Oh, you're getting beat up at home and I'm able to feel that you just walk off. Come on. That defeats the purpose. We have to start stepping out. And we look at all these mystics and great people. They started doing this stuff in the marketplace. They will walk up to people and they would engage them, not because they put on their cloak and just let me get in and get my box of cereal and get out. Like they were there to like engage the people. And I tell you what, the people who have these grandiose stories and they, I mean, there's even people doing it on video is they feel the empathy. They feel the heaviness or whatever it is that you're feeling. It comes in many different forms. And it, if you don't deal with it, it will beat you up. I got friends who, if they don't deal with it, they'll take it home with them. And they mm. just have to, like, kind of wrestle through it at home. And so, like, so my friends will, I got friends that will grab people's hands in public. Look, let me tell you, I know what you're going through, you know. <laughs> and help them release. And people will start crying and just they'll have this, like, encounter. So I'm with you, man. Just, like. And, and there's no, we call it empathic. It's got so other many names for it. discernment yeah. of spirits. I'm able to discern the spirits that are in yeah, the atmosphere. It's, it's but. a made up name, but, um, but what if, you know, cause obviously I like to play with that. Uh, so what if though you just being like, like you said, in the grocery store, okay. Or in the market, wherever. And what if you just, by being in the space of just knowing who you are, it, you know, just in, in its truest form. So there's no, you know, identifying with anything really. It's just, I am that I am. And you just are in that moment. And you're just being in the moment. I see for myself, I see people that, that are in that space. I see people as like, they, they glow this light. Okay. So let's just play with light for a moment. You have this spark of light. Everyone has this light is, it is light. We're all high vibrational beings. So that's the reason why these lower vibrational stuff is just isn't really resonating with them anymore. It's just, it's really getting to them. And so, but when you say that's not who I am and that's not mine, you can more easily let it go when you're not saying, okay, this is mine and, and I have to do, so, or, you know, that's so-and-so's and, and I have to do something with it. Well, no, you don't. Um, what if you just get to be, because I see like myself, when I go to the grocery store, I used to go in and I'd be like, oh, you know, and, and but that doesn't happen anymore. I go in and I'm smiling. I'm looking around. I'm seeing these amazing things. I'm seeing abundance. And what if just by being in that space and you just have this field around you and what if just by being that just, what if, you know, and, and people started, cause you can project out your light, your love, this amazing, uh, these amazing things that are, that are a part of you that are within you. And, and that's the thing It's unlimited and there's abundance. So it, and it cannot be, like I said, you can't lose it. It can't be taken away. So it is, it's an infinite amount. So you, it's not something that people talk about um, giving away their energy and stuff like that. Well, when you really um, go back to, I am energy. So if you are truly energy, could you lose it or and can it be taken away? No. And so that's where a lot of the, you know, that's just part of the, the transition that people are going through to find their true self or to, to discover the power within them and, and this amazing connection that they have. And, but like I said, when you're in the store, I, now I just see more of like this, um, yeah, this, 
this field that, that's around me or that, that I guess is, I don't know if it's projected from me or, or if it's just around me. I don't know. Cause I just, I'm just like, it's everywhere. And so, so it's not me. It's just what's there. And what if just people being in that space, what, what if that just helped them? And so I just leave that open to possibilities. That way, if I don't feel what other people are feeling necessarily, I don't feel that anymore. But yet I know that me just being there, just being here on earth and, and so many people, I see that the, everyone's light, that they, everyone that truly has that in them really does help other people just by being. You may have seen the little cartoon or the little drawing um, I've posted on Facebook before. It shows how this little, this one person that's lit up, you know, enters this room of other people that aren't. And then it just starts to, that's just the way it just, it just works that way. It starts to help other people around them without them even doing anything. And it's just by, from being, what if you just went somewhere and you just smiled and what if that changed everything in, in the place? I mean, it just lit up the place. Yeah. And, and again, I think that that's, you know, the vastness of what, what we're talking about, of putting things in the box, like it only has to be done this way or it's only this way. Mm -hmm. The beauty is, I think it's a little bit of all of it. I think, you know, and there's people who are even intentional with that. They're sending light. They're praying. They're not going to talk to you, but they're in their head. You know, they're having a spiritual warfare going on, walking through there and they're trying to combat it. They are. You're talking to them, but they're thinking other things. And so there's a lot, there's a big contrast of, of what goes on. I've seen it all. I mean, I've seen, uh, I've heard stories. I've been around those people. I, I've been around people who I know uh, walked the talk. You know what I'm saying? Like they literally, you can feel it. You want to hang with them. You mm -hmm. want to be taught by them. You want to uh, hug them. You know, you feel the energy. I've, I've, I mean, there's, there's a girl in India who hugs people, and when she hugs them, they, she heals them. There's another guy who he does whole lectures, and he'll sit there and just stare at you. And when he stares at you, you just feel love. He's sending you love, and energy just overtakes you. You know, there's so many things of just being in that auric field of that person. Uh, the great minister Smith Wigglesworth uh, was on trains, and people would come up to him and say, sir, who are you? What must I do to be saved? Just being around you convicts me of my sin, of the bad things that I'm doing. Just hang And he's not even opened his said a word to these people. He's just there. Well, yeah, because it's not him. It's not them that's actually doing it. There's exactly. this, this divine that is doing it. I mean, unless they want to say, okay, yeah, I'm doing that. And, but that, that's not, you know, so, but because like I said, everyone has, that ability to, to actually do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, there's certain people that seem to have, um, I guess, moved to a certain space to where that just happens, but anybody can, can get there. Anybody can, can actually do that. Yeah. There's, there's levels. And I, I do think that part of it, whether you want to say believing or expecting, expecting is different mm -hmm. of going out like mind, like mission minded, going into those situations and looking for encounter and looking. So I'm, a, you know, starting your day with I'm going to be a blessing for someone and just looking for that. And you that I mean, it's a way to kind of tiptoe in it and see it and open it up mm -hmm. at the beginning. But then you find out it is a lot bigger and it doesn't need you. It can use you, but it doesn't need you. Right. And uh and we are messengers and we are, we carry messages, angels, even for other people. We can, we can do that. And, uh, you know, just the, the vastness of it, man, I've seen so many in, uh, divine encounters like that in, in, in public. And, and I've been, a have been blessed to, you know, be obedient to that energy and, and do things or not do things when I was told, when I felt the energy, Hey, do this, do it, do it. You better do it. And I don't do it. And I said, Oh my God. And I just feel like crap because something because two and two went together. But it's part of knowing and learning and kind of getting in that and kind of understanding, OK, that was I should have been obedient. Next time I'm in a situation, something like that happens spiritually. I feel that energy. I feel that nug to do this for that person. I'm going to do it, you know, because you can feel it. And so it's a big learning experience and people learn differently and we're gifted in and um, in different areas. And again, mm -hmm. some people looking at people, some people touch you and you can feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with like spiritual abilities, some people have to touch you to know what you're, what you're going through. When they touch mm -hmm. you, then they're empathic. 
you know then or you know some people look at mm. you and so they're they're not looking around you know mm. they because it looking in your eyes I, I i'm like that looking people's eyes i can tell all kind of stuff comes to me it's overwhelming at times you got to be mm. you know going you know it it could be overwhelming and everybody's in different places but i think it's uh I think it's all beautiful, just the different contrast yeah. of it all. Every you know? everyone is different. Everyone has their own experience. No two experiences are exactly the same, and so everyone has. And it's not to say that one person is is right or wrong or anything like that, because that's that would go against the whole thing. What what it's all about really is just not you know. It, people are out there doing the best they can. And like I said, I, I know that within everyone is this just amazing divine being. And those possibilities are there for everyone mm -hmm. and anyone. And, but everyone's on their own journey. And so, at, you know, at some, at some point you, you learn to, or you just get to the point to where it's like, okay, um, you know, your health, your well being, you can, you know, have that and and still help others yeah uh if it interferes <laughs> if it's preventing you from thriving um mm -hmm. then obviously that's not the best way to go about it but uh absolutely it, you can pray for anyone just sending someone love or praying for someone can be so powerful so if people are out there looking for ways to help others that is such an amazing way if you can't do it some other way that in itself is very powerful and right. just you knowing that that's powerful is makes it even more so. But so sometimes when I go to, like I said, I just hold this intention with me um, anywhere that I go that, you know what, the divine is with me, but all around me too. And what if me just knowing that helps everyone, you know, you know, and so the more people that know that, imagine what what could happen if everyone started doing that started seeing this divine spark within everyone and it's it's not to say that you have to like what that person is doing or you know what they're saying or anything like that you don't have to agree with them necessarily but you can know that beyond and beneath this um you know what you're seeing based on what they're doing or saying or whatever um, is this amazing divine being within them? And so what if by knowing that that is within other people, that that helped to bring that out in more people, help to yeah. shift things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes actions involved, you know, calling it out, speaking to them, telling them, prophesying it over them as far as like, hey, do you know what's inside of you? No. Well, that's what my videos are for. I don't go around like in public, like you know, like we were talking about. I don't go around telling people. I don't either. Things. I just as, I, I know, have. <laughs> it's fun, but I don't. I'm not that outgoing. But when it yeah. moves you, you have to, you know. Yeah, and and like I say, if someone asks me, that's one thing. But I don't, um, I, because I know that there's this. What if you just stood next to them and and just you know, like I said, they're, they're being sent this love and, and they're being blessed or loved and it, which they already are. But what if that just helps to activate that for them or helps them to feel that in that moment? What if that shifts something for them and they just know in their own way, you know, without having to be told or anything like that? What if they just have this knowing that comes in for them or, or, they're, they're, or they're shown in their own way, you know, a way that's best for them to to get a message or maybe it's a synchronicity. Maybe it's some other kind of message and you know i just leave it open to they'll you know i can i can just be there and, yeah, and or you. i can you know, do just do too. the videos and just do the sessions and i get to do those so i don't feel like i have to yeah. um because i know that just be like all of us are meant to be here and just by being here you're you're already doing what you're meant to do just by being um, cause we're meant to be here and actually thrive and we're meant to be here and, and enjoy our lives. And so the more you find ways to do that and to actually become that and, and allow that I am that I am to, or your true self or to connect in some way to where you can just feel that love that you already are. I mean, that really radiates out so much more than than anything else, really, um, so much more than you could possibly imagine. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's about it's about your your mind frame and uh, believing it and desiring it and expecting it. And if you're doing that, it's having an impact and not just hoping that it will. Maybe there's a hope at the beginning until you start seeing it like happen, right? I mean, yeah. for for a lot of us, we're like, oh, there's something to this. Let me continue to entertain these kind of thoughts. Let me continue to uh, live this type of life because it's happening. I'm seeing results. At first, it's kind of like blind faith. We're just kind of like in this thing, like trying to figure it out. And then stuff's yeah, well, working you, when I do. It's not always that you can see it. And so, um, but you can just know it. You can just go within yourself and just know and be comforted by that knowing that is there. And, and eventually you start to embody those things. You start to embody this, this amazing uh, being that you, that you truly are. And it, it really helps with, and, and is there to support you and nurture you and assist you and, and just do so many things for you. And I recently encouraged people, especially with the new year, but even before that, I was doing this with my clients. It's like, get a notebook and write in there, you know, the universe is taking care of this or the divine is taking care of this. The creator is taking care of this. God is taking care of this, whatever you feel most comfortable with and start writing in that notebook some things, whether it's something that you would like to be resolved or it's something that you would like to to receive or to, you know, something that you want. Put it in the notebook and, and just, you know, say, OK, I wrote it down. That way you can kind of let go of some of the worry around these things. And you can uh, just say, you know what, I put it in the notebook here and the universe is taking care of this. Because then you you have this, you start with this and can have this mindset that, OK, I wrote this down. And so therefore you know, it's being taken care of. You don't know the when, the where, the how, but that's okay. It's happening. And so when you really know that that's happening, that's, I mean, and, and you can even ask for signs. Say, show me, you know, bring me some type of synchronicity, some type of sign that this is working. And a lot of times you will receive that sign. You will receive some kind of sign that it's working. It's so crazy. My, um, just the more we think about that, the complexity of, of God, of life, of the universe, of the mind, of the, the just expecting those things and they show up. It's questionable because like, I, you know, for me coming from a Christian perspective, all that stuff was done for, with prayer because I asked mm -hmm. for it. I received it. And in my mind, it was God that gave it, you know, but it's like mm -hmm. kind of like the, like the laws of the universe. Like I expected it. I put I made my petition known. I wrote it down and it happened. Like kind of, these things kind of go go together. Maybe when they're they're coupled, you know, in, in this way. But like I start looking back over all of this thing that you know, I, I look at it as like it's an entity. It's it's a father, a loving figure that's you know out there and loves me and sends me peace and sends me at all times. I'm never away from that. I'm never not in that. So that helps me. It's a it's almost like a person that's out there. You know, it's just like always wanting to hang out, always listening. You know, and. uh mm -hmm. But to understand the universal law and, and those things you're talking about, writing it down, confessing it, speaking it out, expecting it, and it happens. It's like that's a form of prayer where like every breath is the prayer, yeah. writing it down, believing it, asking God. There's a difference even in prayer, though. I'll say this. There's a difference within like asking and not believing and then like um, or begging like a as a beggar and, and not as a son or a daughter of a king. Right. And uh, and so there's a difference there. Like, can I please have this or hoping something versus like praying with expectation, knowing that you're heard, knowing that your your intentions and motives are, are pure. And then those things are going to happen because, you know, because you need them or whatever the case is, knowing that your needs are met. So just this whole universal consciousness and law and the way things work and i know we put labels on it and it helps us to identify with it it's yeah, god that's how we and the structure helps me but mm -hmm. it's working the exact same way for the person who doesn't use my terminology the exact mm -hmm. same things are working they're finding healing they're finding bliss they're kicking off their old habits because they went on a dmt trip and went to heaven and saw angels and saw you know gnomes and all this kind of stuff it's very similar 
just different modalities even but then you find out that the damn modalities don't even matter just like what you're finding out now it's just all <laughs> is man and it is love and it is it's a, everything all at once and it's it's and all it's okay it's funny that that i i had a feeling all along that there was that there was something and then that's what i was being guided to that there was something more that there are and not not necessarily more it ended up being it's, it's that saying well Sometimes it's like less is more. So it's it's it was finding that it was really more simple, even though it it there was more, but it was so much more simple. That's the reason why I like to say simple yet profound, because mm. it really all goes back to that unconditional love. Um, that's the way that I yeah. uh, imagine <laughs> it anyway. And so, and and it's in in the way that I I another way that I look at a lot of these things that I'm finding to not be true uh, for me is that it's kind of like a child that and i i've mentioned this before uh, but it's it's a really good analogy it's like when you're you have a there's a child that's that has this and is afraid of this monster under the bed right now sometimes you shine a flashlight under there and you can see that there's not a monster under the bed right and then sometimes you just wake up uh you know one day or you just happen to just all of a sudden one day it's it's just not there anymore you know because you it's almost like you outgrew it hmm. that that stage or whatever and so when we really start to shine the light on a lot of these things will a lot of people will find that they'll find their truth they'll find that there wasn't a monster under the bed you know type of thing and so and then and then as you you know after that happens and it's almost like wow, there never was one there. And how wonderful is that to know now? <laughs> and so th that appreciation and knowing that, that, wow, <laughs> it was never there. How cool is that? And so you, you kind of forget about all the stuff you went through because you're so in that moment mm -hmm. and there's so much, oh, wow, thank you. You know, that gratitude in that moment that it's just like, because you're not your past, just yeah, like you're you know not your experiences and, and all these other things. I, I want to ask this to the audience who's listening. What if, I mean, how many of you still like worry about the monster under the bed or the monster in the closet or in so the darkness? It's like, but then again, you just said at the beginning that all possibilities <laughs> exist. And if everything exists, what if a possibility exists for that one time you finally see that monster? Maybe you're in your 30s, but he's under there. Like, what if it exists? You know, people fear false evidence appearing real we create our own monsters right these things mm -hmm. and these hurdles and the bible would call them mountains and i speak to that mountain and tell it to be removed and if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can do anything right all things mm -hmm. are possible um th those experiences man we we start fearing we create these things that don't exist they exist for you though like that's, it's real that's, for that's you that's what i was gonna say it's for those for that child we're using that as the analogy here yeah. it is very real it is very real for that child. That's yeah. the reason why there's no judgment for the people, for anyone out there, because I know up until even recently, I, you know, I've still had some, some fears and things like that. I mean, but eventually um, what, what helped me get past them though, is like, that's not who I am. And so it helped me to let go because it was like that, that's not who I am. And, and it doesn't even fall up under that, that umbrella or that canopy that I have there. That's like, you know, coming from this, I am that I am and, and, and really being in that space versus, like I said, what has been created and manifested from, from the fears. And so that's, those things just stop resonating once you really discover your, that true self, that power within, as well as that is around as well. And that, that you get to, to be a part of and but it's, it, it is, it's people that they do, they're, they're still working through their belief systems and things like that. Yeah. But the more you can get out there though, have fun, find something that brings you peace, whether it's yoga, hiking, um, you know, being out in nature, whether it's reading a book, um, you know, even watching certain things on TV, maybe it's something funny, maybe it's something uplifting. Uh, maybe there's something that, that you, enjoy doing meditation, anything, um, 
that just gets you out of that overthinking so that you can have that moment of peace. And really the, in those moments, that's when you're connecting with your true self there. You're really letting it out, letting it shine and having that relationship with it. And then you discover in that space, that's where there's this space there that there is no fear. And so, so yeah, so, and that's the reason why, when I said anything is possible, but I say, I mean that in the best possible way too, <laughs> though. So I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, sure. more divinely aligned things, you know, so these things that are in alignment are, and when you're in that alignment and, and the, you realize that, that all this stuff is, you know, the things that are aligned with that and you really invite those things to, to come in and to help to shift and change things for you. Instead of things happening to you, invite things to be there to help and work for you. This divine is is there to to do that. So invite that in. Even if you have to wake up in the morning and say, okay, I now invite in, you know, any and all divine beings that are that are, you know, to come in and, and to help me throughout my day. And to and the more you do that, the more you're inviting these amazing things into and you're you're really allowing this this energy these amazing things to come in and help to assist to yeah. be there for you and they do so in in a way that is there's there's less resistance when you do it that way yeah i like what you said um but it, i mean i know you would agree with this too but uh like the uh the things that you things are happening to you ask for things to happen for you but then you find out in hindsight not when it's happening may you 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 move into a space while it's happening but you find out that the things that are happening to you are really happening for you yeah because people... you're not you're actually truly not a victim yeah and, yeah you know, and so it, you it's start for, to it, let go of that yeah. it's helping you on your path whether it's people you know getting fired from a job, you know what I'm saying? Getting uh, people gossiping about you, you know, someone turning their back on you. Like those people just showed their true colors. They were that from the beginning, you know? So it was a good thing because you would have never kicked them away un unless they did that. They're leeches. They're paddle They're working against you and they're on your team, but you would have never let them go. So there's things that happen and they feel just, uh, you, they feel uncomfortable and we feel like a victim, but they're happening for our good. What the enemy meant for destruction, God will in turn use for your good. So there's things that happen for us. But in hindsight, we always, we can see it. Most of us can, if we'll, if we'll look close enough, you move into a place like you were talking about where you're just in this no, and you know, you'll go through it and you'll just smile and wave boys, because you're you know? like you see that spark that light that they are and you yeah. know that all this other stuff it is just personal. temporary it's not personal. it's just temporary yep. and it's not who you are when you're connected in like that it's not you and what if from that space because i've noticed this happens i've noticed that by being in that space that can you know just being in that space uh, the, you know, connected, not really judging, you can actually be more of an observer versus judging. Yeah. And so even changing some of the terms there, you know, when you're like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I was thinking about someone and I, I was totally judging them. What if you were just observing them, you know? So sometimes it's kind of, you know, letting up a little bit on yourself too, so not really being so hard on yourself. And because, I mean, the only person that's really truly in the end judging you is, is yourself. And so, but being in that space, I noticed that people start to change around you, though, too. So it's not like not always do they just disappear. They can they start to make changes. Yeah. Um, you know, may, may, whether it's a relative, um, um, uh, a spouse or a partner or a friend, whatever, they can actually start to make these changes, too. Now, if they decide not to then they just, they, you will notice that maybe they just won't uh, be around as much or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's fine too. You can still send them love and pray for them or whatever, wish them the best and move on. But those that are really meant to, to be there and stay, they, they will. And they'll do so in a way that they, it just naturally, like I said, it's more of a natural occurrence that they will just start to you may notice that, oh, wow, they're being a little bit more kind now, or maybe they're doing something a little bit differently now. And what if you, you just being in that space allows them to start 
connecting with their true self more allows that to start shining more for them because you know that that's within them as well. And so that helps them to really, um, it's not like you're changing them. It's like they, you know, it's just happening naturally and they, yeah. you know, yeah, you, yeah, you bring stuff out of them. So it's not like you're doing it intentionally. Like you bring yeah. stuff out of them even when you evolve and especially yeah. for those who are unevolved or, or you have a Liberty that they still feel judgment about, you know? And so your freedom is like a thread, you know? Um, for me, that you have to use it for good because it happens to all of us, even when people are elevated around us and we're like, hey, what about me? I've been doing this longer than you. And all of those things kind of kick in, whether it's to us or around us. Um, but but just, just knowing that, uh, you know, your time is coming and, um, you know, don't, don't take any, don't, take anything personal and you, you bring out that, that stuff out of people and they bring it out of you, but it's all about the different levels and elevation. Um, uh, got a couple questions here. People want to know a little bit uh, more detail about some of the energy and Reiki. If you want to answer some questions right quick. Sure. Okay. So we got a question here from uh, Padawan says, uh, what physical sensations do you feel when performing Reiki or I guess just doing energy healing, moving energy? Do you feel physical sensations? I used to more so than I do now. Um, yeah, my nervous system used to be really affected by that. It's, it's less so now. Um, so what I do is um, a lot of sometimes I'll feel like just a tingling in my hands and my fingers. Um, otherwise, I like I, said, I, I let go of the whole I, I need to feel something in order for it to yeah, to happen. I, I let that good. go <laughs> yeah. because I, I don't I don't need to do that. I don't yeah. need to or have to feel what other people are feeling. I don't need to or have to feel that kind of energy. If anything, I feel just this peace and this love now. So it went from feeling more of a sensation to just feeling this connection by just being. So that's that was the difference there. Okay. A couple more uh, questions related to Reiki than some other questions too. Uh, John Santiago wants to know, uh, does Reiki work 100% of the time or have you ever had people not feel any effect from it with doing a session? I believe that it does work, especially when you're in a space. It depends on the person, though. It depends on how they're working. I'm, I can't um, speak for anyone else. But when you're connected in and, and you have this amazing just intention or you're just in this space of being and allowing, um, whether that person knows it or feels it or ha experienced something or not, something did shift or change for them. But they may have so much going on that they didn't feel it or recognize it or know it, or, you know, maybe, you know, it, it would take more than one session or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so that varies. It depends on the, the person. I know some people that have had reactions to people doing Reiki to them. And I know that I used to as well. And, but that changed. And so, um, you know, it just depends on, on who you're working with and their integrity and their intentions and things like that. And, and, you know, sometimes they they might believe that they're bringing some of their stuff in. They may not even know it. It might be a subconscious thing for them and they might not even know it. So they, you know, but yeah, just, you know, when you're working with someone, just just kind of sense or kind of ask for guidance in some way, a sign, you know, that they're in integrity, that they're definitely allowing and in, in being that clear channel, not bringing yeah. any of their stuff in to a session or anything like that. Okay. Uh, that kind of, kind of leads in kind of piggy tails off the next question. This is from Christy Johnson. Uh, she says, when, when doing healing work, have you seen any instant transformation just in one session or is it more, or is it more instances where it just kind of gradually uh, over time? It depends on the person. I have had people that have had instant things happen. Amazing instant things happen. Like someone that, could barely walk before they were able to go and, and walk around the block right after our session. Uh, I had people, someone that had like cold symptoms. They, it went, they went away just by us within like 15, 20 minutes of us being on the phone. Um, someone that had lost their taste, uh, their taste buds weren't working. And I didn't even do a session with them. Um, they paid for a session. We never even did the session because they said that it, it, resolved and and they didn't need the session anymore and so one you know so amazing things can happen and then some people i worked with for months and it just depends on on the person 
uh, I don't, I, I can't say the how or the why that works the way that it does, because, you know, that, uh, that's not up to me. And so I just do my best in that moment to, to help. And like I said, amazing things have happened, but other people, and, and when I, when I would check in, I would get an answer that yes, it was helping them, but it just didn't, wasn't helping them with maybe one specific thing, a certain pain or something that they were experiencing, but it was helping them in other ways. So, yeah. you know, it depends on, yeah. you know, some people go in with an expectation, oh, I've got, you know, maybe, you know, their arm is hurting or something and they want that taken care of. Well, maybe there's something else going on that's uh, for the divine is more of a priority and maybe it's working on that <laughs> that's and, good. and can eventually lead to helping with the other. But some things happen just instantly, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, whatever level it is. And sometimes it's a it's a process for some people. It just depends, depends on where they're at. That's good. I agree with that. Um, another, this is a different topic, but Brandon, uh, Brandon, Brandon Higgins wants to know, uh, when we get off track or lost in the matrix, how do we regain our focus back? Go back to center, focus on your breathing. Know that you never truly take a step back. Mm. You can always get back to right where you left off or better. Yeah. Um, because your true self is always there. So really just go within or, you know, focus on your breathing, get, do what you can to kind of get out of that, the mind uh, running and racing and all that stuff, whatever you can do, meditations, any of the things that we mentioned, like yoga, um, going out in nature, hiking, jogging, whatever works for you. Sometimes just folding clothes or something mindless, like washing dishes or something, uh, maybe listening to music or singing. Sometimes humming can calm the mind down. Um, but really focusing on your breath, coming back to center, and then all that other stuff will start to kind of, um, yeah, just kind of fade a little bit there for you until you can get back back on track. That's good stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah. A lot of people are talking about the, the monster stuff too. The monsters mm -hmm. under the bed they're still yeah. they're, they definitely fit a lot of a, a lot of okay so maybe this a, a lot of other adults still fear about the monsters under the bed from they what i see they do that was so just an analogy don't feel like you're alone yeah right and it's also another fun thing that i like to um to say is that like imagine yourself on a bus okay imagine you're a passenger in the the front you know like in one of the front seats of the bus there um, now imagine in the, in the driver's seat, now are you going to trust in the driver's seat more? So this amazing divine, this universe that knows when and where and how to get to where you're going and all of this stuff, or are you going to put in that driver's seat? Imagine the mind being more of like, or the subconscious, unconscious, whatever, being more like a, a child. So you're going to put a child in the driver's seat of that bus that you're on, or are you going to put uh, this amazing divine that knows when and where and why and how to get to where you're going? Now, sometimes you get off that bus and you take a few little stops along the way, but that's okay. You can always get back on that bus, okay, and really get back to your destination there. And so sometimes, you know, maybe, uh, and know that by connecting in, some people do like through their heart center, heart space, maybe that, uh, but whatever it is that helps to bring you, um, even if it's just for a few moments of peace, that's that, that's that connection. That's when you know you, you got it in that moment and know that it's always there. Sometimes this other stuff's a little bit louder. So sometimes it's, it's really practicing that, connecting with that to help that too, because you really are this amazing divine being. You are this light that you can shine on anything and it can, and it can really, it's like I said, when you shine the light on that darkness, it really, it, it, there, you know, the, the light can exist in the darkness, but the darkness cannot exist in, in that light. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it, it's, it's, yeah, just really knowing who and what you truly are, not what you thought you were or what someone else said that you were. And you're not your experiences or your past or your beliefs or any of these things, but you are this amazing being that is there to help you have this amazing human experience. Awesome. That's good. Um, 
I guess another question here for this is from Adam wants to know what's a good way uh, of dealing with anxiety in the workplace. Mm, yeah. So that's another thing that can help if as long as um, you can absolutely work with kind of manifesting like writing down in that notebook some of these things that might be going on in the workplace and maybe some people's names, uh, maybe another job that you'd like to do or have or, you know, change to and ask the universe to take care of that for you just and put that aside. Yeah. But anyone that's bothering you at work, like I said, when you start working on yourself and connecting in with your true self there, it can help those and, and change the entire environment around you because you're changing your inner environment and how you react and respond to things. And when you're no longer overreacting to what other people say and do, they're like, what the heck, you know? And then they, they'll start to just, you know, change too. But if you actually started seeing that spark of light within them, it could possibly, what if, <laughs> like I said, what if, it just took you and, and that helped by you just recognizing that within them. What if that just started and it may not happen right away, but it could, anything is possible. It could happen the first day or it could take maybe a week or two. I don't know. Um, but just notice what you notice. Start just really saying, you know what, that's where they're at. I'm not going to judge them because I don't know. You don't know what their past was. You don't know why they act the way that they do. They could have had a really bad childhood or been treated really bad at some point in their life, or they could be just being controlled totally by their mind and not really connected. And so you have the advantage by being this amazing spiritual being and knowing that uh, evidently by watching the show that you, that you have that connection in some way, shape or form for you. Um, so you have the advantage to, to change things. So know that you have that that power. It's not your responsibility at all, but it's it's something that you get to do. I love so it. That takes the pressure off a little bit there. <laughs> love it, my friend. Well, thanks so much. Uh, let people know where they can find out about your work at. If somebody wants to get a session from you or check out your your new show that you got going on on the new network and all that cool stuff where they can find out more about you at. Yeah, yeah. All of my information, all my links, the show information, sessions, all of that, YouTube, Facebook, all of that is on my website, which is christywarnick.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y-W-A-R-N-I-C-K.com. And I have a Facebook page, which is Christy Warnick, spiritual healer and teacher, which is facebook.com slash Christy Warnick one, the number one. And everything, all the information is there. Um, I share out information on, on those places there. And so, yeah, I'm happy to, to connect with people. Like I said, people find me through uh, podcasts, through interviews, through Facebook, through my website, through YouTube. Um, and some people, they don't even know how they found me. They just do. And it's just amazing how that works because I put out there that, you know, whoever's meant to find me, they will. And I don't do a lot of advertising. I, I share out uh, inspirational posts, but I don't actually advertise my sessions so much. But I'll mention it like during, you know, a video or something. Hey, if you'd like to schedule a session with me, you know, just go to christymornick.com. But I don't really put that out there that much, but people find me. But it's because that's just, you know, that's the way the universe works. <laughs> yeah, when it, what's it, what's it uh, the quote, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And uh, yeah. when, yeah, the person, I mean, when a person needs your services, when they find you, they're mm -hmm. supposed to be there. And there's a, there's a trust there because then you got, you don't have to make anything happen. It happens for you when you're ready. And, and, and yeah. if you're not ready, it's not going to happen. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to kick any doors open or wedge any doors open. Like the universe got you when it, when you're ready, it's coming. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you, you know, what, whatever it is, if you're doing private sessions, if you're stepping out, starting a podcast, if you're ready to start working on music or following your dreams, make sure you're doing everything you're supposed to do and the doors will open. You don't have to kick anything open. So enjoyed it, my friend. Thanks so much for, for coming on, hanging out with me. Really enjoyed it. So much uh, inspiration and encouragement sent to people and busting up paradigms and uh, only to uh, teach them how to, how to step in the flow. Cause yeah, it, it we, is bad. We, it, it's very bad when you, uh, when you, th when you're in a place and you think that you have it all figured out. The Bible says pride cometh before a fall. 
And a lot of us get prideful and we got it all figured out and then poof, it just all implodes on itself. And, and it's okay because uh, I did, I, I went through somewhat of a, at one time, like a, I, I don't like to really label it, but I guess the closest you would say would be like, um, but first I, I, when I went through what I went through to begin with was more of like a, I was calling it a course correction, <laughs> but um, there, there was like an identity crisis thing that went on when I was really working my way through a lot of these things. And like I said, asking so many questions and getting all these answers, but a, some of them were being um a little bit um confused by the mind and so i did go through this well you know who am i what am i you know but i all when i went back to that i am that i am and once you know it and really know it there's there's really no, no going back unless you just absolutely just throw all that out the door and just follow your mind completely but um but yeah, so I love helping with inspiring people and empowering people because like I said, no one is, is any better than anyone else truly. And so we all have this amazing divine within us. And, and I love helping you to discover that. And it's, it's such a beautiful thing to, to see people just shine. I, I just, I, it's just, it's so worth it. It's, it's great. Love it. Thanks so much, my friend. Uh, ChristyWarnick.com is the website. Make sure you guys go check her out. And uh, follow her on Facebook. She has some really awesome guests and a lot of cool stuff to say. She does energy healing and all that stuff over Facebook Live and stuff, too. It's really good. So thank you so much for hanging out with me, friend. We'll have to do it again. Absolutely. And I'm going to have you back on my show soon, too. So I'll get with you on that. So thank you. Thank you for having me. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk about this. I got this bad boy yeah. I'm trying to promote. <laughs> I'd love to go in and talk to your guest uh, audience Great about it. Great to have me. Yeah, thank you, my friend. Absolutely. Let's do it. Thank you so much. Many All blessings. Right, thank you. Shalom, shalom. Peace. Christy Warnick, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome soul. She's from Alabama, which is interesting. I'm from Alabama. Uh, there's not a lot of this kind of talk going on. So obviously, you don't just walk around and talk to random people in public about this kind of stuff, um, especially in Alabama. Uh, somewhere else, maybe, but Alabama's a little bit different. You know, but we're the uh, the thicket clearers. We're the way seers here, and you know, wouldn't have most most people. Again, we talk about Alabama, right, and spirituality and New Age or whatever you want to call this crap. Um, people call it all kind of other names, right? They see anything outside of biblical Christianity from what they've seen or churchianity, anything outside of churchianity, it's New Age mumbo jumbo. Um, but most people become spiritual or become hippies and in Alabama and grow their dreadlocks out and all that kind of stuff. They buy hula hoops and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and they move, they move to uh, Denver or California, but my, a lot of them migrating to Denver, going to the weed shops and stuff like that. It's like, hold on. We need people here, man. Change the atmosphere here instead of just jumping ship and leaving. So, you know what I'm saying? I've been one to hunker down here and make sure that, you know, I am who I am. And it's been hard. It hasn't been easy. It's easy to jump ship and run, but we've been here, man establishing the kingdom of christ wherever we go it's been awesome it was really cool too because she's talking about like doing sessions with people and like people finding you when they're supposed to and how they're supposed to i remember this uh one session that i did with a friend is now uh she's now someone who listens to the podcast now and uh and supports and everything but she was just looking up one day she looked up and i want to say this because danny's in the in the chat now she was looking up sleep paralysis she was struggling, night terrors, all this crazy stuff in her, in her sleep, and um, was doing her research and Googled it and found mine and Danny's episode that we did, and I named the whole episode that. I said the first good 30 minutes was about it, but we went in really deep about sleep terror, sleep paralysis, theories, how to break it, how to shake it, you know, and things like that. And for, so we talk about this stuff openly, but there's a lot of people who have, they don't know anything about it until they experience it and then they go to google and then they're oh this is what it is or this is exactly what they're talking about stuff that's out of this world you didn't even know that nobody else knew about or experienced it and you googled it and boom there it is and so this one lady she went to you know google typed in sleep paralysis or whatever keyword she did and she found our episode listened to it and booked a session with me right after. And so I was able to kind of send some healing her way and counsel her on some stuff and talk about it and let her know what was going on. And she's been able to sleep after a session. 
right? And never had those again. There was, man, there was another guy who, uh, this was, uh, wasn't through a personal session, but we went, um, we, we did an event years ago, man. I remember this dude, Colby Craighead was his name, Craighead. And uh, he, he added us on Facebook after, but we went to his city to do some music and we were fasting and praying the whole weekend until we got done um, uh, performing and ministering. That's just how we rolled. Nobody's eating anything until we're done. And it might be a day, two days, whatever. After we're done, after we're done ministering, then we eat. That's just how we roll. We made sure everything was focused and we got there and we're feeling a shift. Something's going on. Something's different. We're feeling kind of weird. We got up there to minister. And uh, this one young dude, Kobe Craighead, came up to the to the uh, the front while we were performing. When we was asking if anybody needs prayer at this huge event, kid comes up front and he's like, "Man, I I haven't been able to sleep in so many days, and I'm having all these nightmares, and I have blah 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 blah. I need prayer, man. I feel like stuff's coming for me. All kind of just crazy out of this world stuff, right?" And so we laid hands on him and prayed for him and rebuked those entities that were messing with him and those kind of things and ministered love and hope to him. And uh, so he, he goes home and then uh, he adds me on Facebook. And then the next next day, two, three days, he's like, man, thank you guys for the prayers. Thank you guys for the help, because um, that was the first good night's sleep that I got. That I haven't been able to sleep good. And after you guys laid your hands on me, whatever y'all did, it worked keep it up i'm following your work thanks so much so it's the spirit of expectancy man it's knowing that it's going to happen it's knowing that um greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that all of these spirits that are little weirdos and kind of it's all kind of stuff out there they all they all bow to the supremacy of christ i don't care who they are whether it's a night terror spirit uh it doesn't matter like uh addictions they must bow now the person has to give up whatever whatever type of uh connection or door doors that they have open that's between them um but you have to close those doors and that's through christ man so that's what uh uh the the beauty of of who christ is and so if any if any of you guys ever uh question what i believe when it comes to the supremacy of christ and who jesus is don't be afraid to ask i talk to so many people on the show with different backgrounds and, and beliefs and i don't cut them off i don't if they say something that I don't believe, I may shake my head or say, yeah, just because I understand where they're coming from. or I've studied even from that realm, might not believe it. I just know what they're thinking. This isn't that show. This isn't a debate. You guys know that. But, um, you know, just because I have someone on doesn't mean I agree with everything they believe or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if anybody ever, you know, f- feel free to inbox me, man. There's some questions you have or want to know. Look, I'm open. I try to respond to every comment that I can. If it's on YouTube, if it's an email, you know, I uh, I, I try to be open and honest and, and give you guys uh, opinions. If I know it, if I don't know it, you know, most of the time it's just theory. I'll give you I'll give you all the theories and which ones seem plausible, which one that I kind of go with more than the other. Because in a, in a place of studying and thinking that you have it figured out you say, look, there's two or three things. I'm kind of in the middle of both of them. This is what it is for me. It's the same thing. So I want to be open uh, with that kind of stuff and always make sure that I'm uh, transparent with you guys with anything. So just don't hesitate to ask. Don't lump me or anyone else in a in a group, right? Or say, okay, that's this. You're a new age or you're a cult or you're a Christian. You know, I, there's a lot of places I'm not uh, welcome because I'm a Christian, because I believe in the supremacy of Christ, because I believe in the power of the cross. They won't have me because I use the word God in my book i uh, rather you mean use the word energy or universe which i'll use them all i like all of them i'm not married to any of them i'm not married to any of those terms i'll use them all i see the beauty in them all but uh make sure that you guys are walking in, in peace and love and and uh respect and uh just the awe and adoration i'm telling you you're in the right place if you when you there's people in my tribe and people in the group here who like they, they'll tell me you know and it's cool though like there's certain times where they're listening to me and they're, they're, they're listening to something they love and then I'll hit them with something crazy. <laughs> and then they, um, then they're like, it, it hurts them. It cuts them at the core. It's like, hold on. It, whether they've never heard it or always heard that this was demonic or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and it, it checks them. It checks their pride, their ego. And not, not, nece- not meaning that I'm right by any means on anything that I bring to the table. But it's just it does something to them. And get familiar with that. Get 
familiar with that because that's going to teach you. You learn. I still face it. I still face it, man. Like when people say stuff about me or slander and bring up stuff, you know, I got all kind of weird weirdos out there, man. And even though these people don't matter to me at all, when they, it still does something. You know what I'm saying? You want to be validated. And we're always struggling with, with, you know, the opinions of men and the validation of others, all of us, man. Um, Bob Jensen says, when you say you believe in the supremacy of Christ, do you believe Jesus is God? In a traditional Christian sense, I don't even want to like break that down because that is so even I've could, only because like I've felt I've dealt with that in a divisive manner, like a trick question. And so I read that as a trick question, not saying that you you say it as a trick question, but I've dealt with Christians in the past and I'm going to rephrase it and talk about the trick question again. When you say you believe in the supremacy of Christ, supremacy of Christ, do you believe in Jesus? Jesus is God in the traditional Christian sense. There's the fact that if I say no, then I'm in trouble, right? Or the fact that I say, yeah, then I'm oneness or whatever the case is, right? So um, um, I don't want to answer that <laughs> because I've answered it from people who were waiting for my response. And when I gave them my response, they left or whatever. But I'll tell you, no, I don't believe Jesus is God. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he was God's only begotten son and that through him i believe colossians chapter one which is what i even told a friend the other day which is so beautiful i mean i wrote about it in my book when i at the very end of this book i talk about angels demons spirits aliens nephilim giants um fairies angels imps elementals i talk about all that in here but at the very end i wrap it up with jesus who is christ and i go into colossians chapter one which is the most beautiful breakdown of who he is for me and uh and so yeah check it out it's um chris garner says it's a trick because so many have drawn the line drawn a line down on that yeah is jesus god or is he the son of god you know it's just like i mean they're willing to break fellowship on that um we got some trolls in the group brother drew gower <laughs> he says what is your stance on medicinal and recreational weed to each his own. I don't do it. So, you know, I'm not against it, but I don't do it. I can't do it. Say that. Let's see. So, I mean, I didn't mean that with any offense, uh, Bob. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but just the, the questions that are already, um, that are proposed in such a way to, uh, to either spark a debate or, to break fellowship or to leave or oh, he don't believe jesus is god it's like well he's the son of god you know one kind of same thing he was created with the you know he was there before us with the father and he created everything and and through him and for him was all things created colossians chapter one is really good man um let's see let me go through some more of these questions right here brandon higgins says true seeker it's who we are meant to be <laughs> one with all all things to all men so that I can win some, bro. For sure. The head already won. Uh, somebody said earlier, let me see if I can scroll to this comment. It was about truth. I think it was Padawan. Let me try to see if I can find this really quick. I wonder if I can. Uh, I try to type in control. Okay. So we, so Padawan was talking about ideas. He was making, he made a bunch of comments, but this one was, you said, what if that idea and this is some of the ideas that we were talking about. Um, what if that idea is just a trapping of the imagination and not truth? What if that's what it all is? It's all a trapping of the imagination. And that becomes what? Your truth. We're talking about stepping back from that and calling that truth. Like stepping back from the trapping of the imagination of whatever you think truth is. And, and and if it works for you, run with it. But stepping back and not being so connected or so um, combative over your truth. Because I'm telling you, once you, you think you know, <laughs> you have no idea. It's the beauty of it all, though. And to be open to that, to have your mind blown by the mysteries of 
of of what this this universe is and what God and cre- creation and the mind and nature. It's so awesome, man. There's, it never stops. You never have it all figured out. You continue to grow. And Bob says last. Uh, Bob Jensen says last question. I promise. Um, is God personal being personal being from your point of view? Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure, because I mean that's the difference. And I, I say God, universe, spirit, with whoever. Again, I I think it's all inclusive to me. But there's a difference there. Why I still say God, because a God is a father to me, and God is a uh, is is a, is a, a personal being, is a friend. Um. He, he, he hears us when we when we pray, you know, understands our needs, and um. So yeah, it's very personal to me, very personal experience. And um, but the universe isn't compassionate. The, the universe doesn't care if, who you pray into. The universe doesn't care uh, about you. You know, you, you universe will destroy you and not think twice. So um, that's the difference between what I call God and just saying the universe, even though I use those terms just depending because I, I still like them all. And even the term God is kind of limiting, right? Of being a person. It goes beyond being a person and being everything. So yeah, I think God is that, that personal experience and personal one-on-one, but it's everything. It like, it's like the life essence of the universe that communicates with you through everything. It ain't just through, it's through a still small voice, it's through everything and your it, it, it communicates with you through your consciousness. Like going back to what I said about, you know, manifestation and my prayers and writing things down and God's granting my prayers and I'm putting it out there to the to the world, to the universe. I'm writing it down. Like you write it down and it and, and you program it into your consciousness and then God works with it. He speaks to it and through it. It's this one ancient universal voice that speaks through everything and he says, My sheep Hear my voice, a stranger's voice. They will not follow us. Being able to hear the voice and song of the creator speaking through everything. If you can't see God in all, then you can't see God at all. There's no there's no cap to that. There really isn't. It's like, can you see God when you're in, a, in, 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 in prison and in, when you're in the dungeon, when you locked up and charges are against you for no reason and you know you're supposed to be out there with your brothers and you haven't done anything? Can you see him in the pit? Can you see him in the palace? It's like every single step of the way is learning to see his hand in the midst of it and not freaking out and always trusting. And those that's the test because that is responding with love, responding with love and and trust and admiration. It's like, oh, again, we go back into this whole God thing of, you know, our relationships like. God's like, oh, you you love me when everything's going good. That's the story of Job. You only love me when things are going good. You only believe in me when everybody believes in me. You only believe in me when it's convenient. You only, you know, believe in me when you when you ain't going through a divorce. You know what I'm saying? You well, now you question me because you're going through it. It's like, look, it's just it's, you reach a place where there's total faith and trust, no matter where you are, and you see Him in it, and that's when. That's when you buckle up, man. There's gratitude there no matter where you are. And it just keeps getting, you can go in as close as you want. It's uh, um, fractals. The closer you get into it, the, the more depths you see of the beauty. The further you get away from it, the more of the bigger picture you'll see of what this thing is starting to look like. So it's a little bit of all of it, man. It's a beauty. It's a song and dance and it'll never stop until we until we're out of here. And then even when we're there, I'm sure we're going on to other places and traveling and learning so much more on the other side. So let's see what else we got here in the chat. Um, Chris Garner says, I got a diamond in, got a diamond in my soul <laughs> shining like a light pole. So uh, the biggest Chewy says, hey, man, will you pray that I be delivered from these gluttony spirits for sure? 2020. 2020 we're coming for these gluttony spirits they, they gotta stop now y- y'all know i talk about this is is what what's whether it's gluttony or um instant gratification not working for something not preparing something um being mindful 
of all things, being mindful of what we put in our body, right? That's a big, that's a big one, bro. I hope, I hope you're for real, man. But this is a big one. Uh, gluttony is a huge one. So I've struggled with it for sure. Comfort, instant comfort. When we're talking about like all of this stuff, it's instant gratification. Whether you're addicted to drugs, whether you alcohol, uh, pornography, food. Food's the easy one. Go through the drive-thru. Like that stuff's deep, bro. That stuff will get deep. If you check it and uh, and it comes back, that stuff just continues to come. But gluttony is a big one. But I, I want to um, deal with all instant gratifications. Adam says, like your carrot hot dog, right? Right? I mean, I'm trying to make those choices myself. I identify it in myself for sure. For sure. For sure. You have to identify it in yourself to even reach out to others. That's empathy. When we talk about empathy, that's empathy. And that's where you can pray with authority because you've dealt with that spirit before. Spirit of gluttony? Sure thing. I don't even want to talk about my experiences with gl- gluttony. I'm so embarrassed. It'll move. It, I'm so I'm so embarrassed of, of my gluttony in the past and what it's looked like. I've made a choice to fight it head on. It's embarrassing. Trust me. I don't even want to talk about it. But I've dealt with it and I'm dealing with it. Yeah, I'm trying to, um, yeah, taking the diet. There, there comes a time in, in, in the Christian walk or the spiritual life, wherever you are, that God is eventually going to deal with your diet. Eventually. At some place or point, God's going to deal with your diet. For many of us, we get into the Hebraic movement and within the Hebrews and we say, well, I want to eat how Jesus ate. Well, that was no, no pork, no, uh, you know, it was really no bottom feeders, you know. And so there was a time, not about eight years, we, we ate uh, according to that the, uh, Levitical law and, uh, and trying to eat the things that Jesus ate. Um, Smith Wigglesworth, again, I mentioned him earlier at the end of his life. God dealt with him about his diet. He was a large man um, and he started eating kosher as well according to the Bible. Um, now we've kind of transcended, I would say, the uh, uh, the kosher diet. So many people now, kosher's not a thing. Now they're trying to cut out meats, flesh, dead animals out of their diet. And that's a big one. You know, there's a, we're programmed that that's what we're supposed to eat. And not only that, but you're supposed to eat it three times a day and you're supposed to have meat with every meal. A lot of stuff, anyway momentary pleasures instant fixes quick fixes are never good for you whether it's food whether again all of these things i I mentioned drugs they come back you got to pay for it later you can't there is no quick fix you pay for it later you pay for it you pay for it later so i'm gonna say a prayer real quick man just to bless you guys out again we've been talking about that energy just tap into the energy no matter where you are. You can feel it from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The peace, the bliss, the love of God, the awe of God that loves you so much. It just extends to you right now no matter where you are. Whatever you're dealing with, whether it is that gluttony, we called it out. You felt something. There's a conviction there. We hit a nerve, whatever it is. If it's the drugs, if it's the alcohol, whatever you have that's your 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 hiding place that's not God whatever it is man we just deal with that Father I thank you for grace and peace God for in this year Lord 2020 and beyond that people will find their solitude they will find their hiding place their secret place in you that the secret place won't be over here in some corner the secret place wouldn't be in a substance but the secret place would be in your presence under the shadow of the Almighty Father I'm asking for peace right now to be extended to them. And I just come against any demonic stronghold, any open doors. We trace it back right now. Shut those doors, however they were opened, to gluttony. To just always wanting more, 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 no matter what it is. Nothing is never enough. I rebuke it right now. I speak peace in Jesus' mighty name to loose it. 
let it go. Sever all ties right now. Peace to come in. That you are whole, that you need nothing outside of yourself to complete you. Take a deep breath in through your nostrils. Peace of God. Release. Rest. Breathe it in one more time. Peace of God. Holy Spirit, release. Yeah, right there. Let it go. Don't pick it back up. This is it. This is the activation. This is what you needed. It's what you was waiting for. Don't go back to it. Peace right now. More energy. Stay in the flow. You can tap into this whenever you want. Do it through the breath. Conscious, connected breathing. Release. Peace right there. You can feel it. It's through the breath. The Ruach. The Holy Spirit. Set apart spirit. Peace of God right now. More. Receive, receive, receive. Grace right now. Stronger than any foreign spirit. Shutting all doors. Forgiveness right now. More forgiveness is the flow. Mmm, feels so good. I love it. It's good. Real good. Love it, guys. Man. Jesus' name. Love you guys. Whew. Brett says, walk by faith, walk in the spirit, walk in love. Yeah, I mean, dealing with the spirit of gluttony. Look, Brett even helped helped us out, man. Even this year, he's uh, he gifted us. I had a, um, I know I talked about this again, but we had a, a package show up, and I went and got it. And it was a, a juicer, big old juicer. Somebody ordered us a juicer, showed up at the house. I was like, who's, I didn't even know who sent it. I went on Discord. I was like, did anybody send us a gift? And uh, somebody was like, well, Brett, Brett posted a, a tracking code the other day, <laughs> tracking number. And I went and clicked it. It was like shipping it to my place and ordered us a juicer online. So thank you for that, Brett. We've been, again, I've been starting with beats, man been eat, eating beets beet smoothies and i mean mixing it not just straight beets like with other smoothies and juice and that stuff so thank you for the gift man got another gift in today too and i'm not sure who this was from but i, I checked the p.o box today and there was a gift from barbara and uh said that we mentioned this in a, in a conversation i don't i'm not sure <laughs> which conversation it was but sent me um what's it's like 25,000 um, Iraqi currency. And I did the uh, <laughs> I did the translator, the uh, currency translator, and it goes to um, uh, 20 bucks. Iraqi money that showed up in, in the mail today. So thank you. It's interesting, neat, different. Never thank you for the gift. Um, so thank you for that. So yeah, people send gifts. I got some really cool stuff around here. Um, from some really cool people. Brett sent me a bunch of anointing oil from Israel. He sent me the map of Israel. We've got like, I've got posters and mugs and hats and all kind of stuff that people in the community send. I love getting gifts, right? Who doesn't love getting gifts? So, man, uh, thank you guys. I enjoyed this this podcast, this episode, and uh, hanging out with you guys. Um, tomorrow's Thursday, and uh, we got another show lined up for tomorrow. Let's see who we're speaking with. Let me pull this up just to see who I don't even know I'm so far booked out nope nothing tomorrow at least nothing on schedule we've been doing a bunch though did something yesterday did a really good one yesterday that was wild huh the Mark English one for those of you who have caught that that was wild a lot of a lot of good stuff you just got to hold on that conversation was like a a, 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 a a psychedelic experience through the ether Meaning you just got to grab something and hold on to it and pull it out. Because <laughs> there was so much information that came. So, Tina says, when the dinner, when the, okay, that was you, Tina, that sent that? Thank you. It said Barbara on it. So, she says, when the diner revalued, you will have a whole lot more than just $20. So, thank you. It's a really good gift. So, Thank you for that. Awesome. Appreciate it. Good stuff. With that, guys, I'm going to say peace and shalom. And uh, 
Uh, well, Adam says School of the Mystics tomorrow. For sure. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be good. Show up and, and be on time. It's going to be good. School of the Mystics, 7 p.m. Central, Thursday nights. Um, it's going to be good. If uh, Yeah, you got to be a patron to get access to it. It's only a dollar. One dollar if you'd like to get access. Go to my uh, my uh, Patreon or go to the link in this video and sign up. It's a dollar. You'll get the email. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. It's going to be good tomorrow, too. Peace, peace. Have a book, product, or service you'd like to promote? Yeah. Look no further. Ad slots and commercials are now available for you to get the word out about what you do on the Truth Seeker Podcast. We give you what you need. Get it. Engage the spiritual community and get yourself instantly in front of thousands of listeners who explore the spiritual, paranormal, supernatural, religious, and metaphysical realms. Have your commercial inserted into our entire archive of episodes. That includes the one with Jordan Maxwell, James Gilliland, Dr. Michael Heiser, and that weird one with Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Stop sleeping on yourself. Know your worth. Let's get the word out today about what you have to offer. Head on over to truthseeker.com and click on advertise for more info. Yo. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.